the relationship between uh, constituents and MPs is always, or even with the general public and MPs, is actually one that has the, the, the MPs themselves have debated. They're elected, you see, on a constituency basis, so presumably you've got to appeal to at least minimally a majority of the voters who actually turn out in that constituency. What, they, what then the relationship is after you've won the election has always been a matter of debate. There's a one tradition which says you are a delegate of some sort. You go off and do what they tell you. The, the, the local opinion says, go to Westminster, go to London, and represent us and our views. The other alternative is that you're actually elected to form a government, to be a government, to shape a government. Um, and that means that your constituents elect you in a, in a condition of trust, to go to Westminster and govern, or shape government. In their interests, bearing in mind what they're interested in and their concerns, because you want to be re-elected, and that's the tag they howl over you to say, I, I've done the job, you, you will ask me to do my, use my own judgment on these things, and this is what I thought was best for the country, and for you as well. So the tensions are built into the way we've organised ourselves. At present, there is an edginess about it, because uh, that feeling that they aren't listening to us is around. I think it's a number of different elements, part of the expenses scandal, but also the referendum that we didn't have on the EU. You know, there's all kinds of things going on um, where people feel, are they listening at all? Do they really represent us? Are they saying things that we feel very uneasy about? Was there a war in Iraq that we really weren't, hadn't been properly explained to us? These ambiguities and uncertainties are very normal and very natural, but currently there's a whole bundle of them. And of course what you've got is a government that's very tired, visibly very tired. And that makes people feel, well, they aren't listening because they're willing to quit, they're going to give up, they're emotionally withdrawn. Uh, the extinct volcanoes, as uh, Disraeli cheerfully called the Gladstonian cabinet. <laughs> uh,